Okay. Mr. Reed, uh, first question I want to ask you is, uh, how was your childhood like? Well, I was right in there in an old back room. I was born in this house 92 years ago. So I growed up, went to Oak Hill School, and at that time, high school was 11th grade. So I got through the 11th and finished. That was back in 1937. And there wasn't many jobs around here, so a classmate and I decided we'd join the Navy. Oh, okay. In, in February 1938, I was sworn in to the U.S. Navy okay. at Asheville. And I stayed in there seven years, six months, and 12 days. Served on the USS Raleigh, named after the capital of our state most of the times. And it was the first ship hit at Pearl Harbor and I was, I was on it. You ever heard of Pearl Harbor? December the 7th. Um, the morning of December 7th, how was the morning before the Japanese came? Oh, it was uh, just peaceful out there, just quiet, peaceful, nothing going on. December the 7th, I was, you was allowed to sleep late on Sunday morning. You could sleep till eight o'clock and five minutes till eight. I heard a big bound bang and someone said a board blew up. And about that time they sounded our general quarters and said the Japanese was attacking us. We took the first torpedo hit out there because we had tied up, moored, where an aircraft carrier usually did, but it hadn't came in. So we, when they came in, they had certain targets. Of course, they knew where to go to because they had maps of it and everything. So when we were sitting where the carrier was, we took the first hit, torpedo hit, and about nine o'clock, the second wave came over and they dropped bombs on us and a bomb hit us also. No deaths, seven injuries. Seven injuries around Out of 350 some people. That was normally our size of our crew. It, it could go up 15 or 20 or it could go down 15 or 20 to it is replaced. But as Usually about 350 people <coughs> on it. That's it right yonder. You see that ship? Well, that's the one I stayed on for six years. USS Raleigh is named after our state capital down here. Had 10 six-inch guns on it. And it others buried, had uh, five, six, seven, three-inch guns on it. was anti-aircraft guns. That's, that's about all they shot at. How long were you stationed in Pearl Harbor? I went out there in September of 1939 and stayed till February of 42. That was our, the ship's home port had been at San Diego, but they moved us out there and that was our home port is the reason I was there so long. But I didn't mind it, that weather, you can't beat that weather. and. I've seen it different times. You look up at night, see a rainbow at night. The only thing bad was the population. I think it was a 1940 census they found out there's so many military men there that they had it in their paper. I, I think it was that there's 40 men for every one woman on the island. So social life wasn't that good. But we didn't stay in there all the time. We went out and patrolled and... What was your rank? Uh, fire Controlman, second class, when I came out. Fire Controlman, second class? Yeah. Uh, fire Controlman didn't have nothing to do with fight, fighting fires or nothing. They controlled the firing of the guns. When you were in the Navy, did you serve any other battles besides uh, in World War II, I mean? I don't remember right off. Don't remember? Okay. Hey. 
It's okay. S several years up to two, two several years ago, a lot of that was burned in my mind. But my old mind is like the rest of me; it's a failing. Okay. Oh, I uh, hope I can get up and get around. Ah. I don't do this very often. I need things I ain't got, but if you want to put it down, you can, but right there's where the torpedo hit. Okay. Oh, it was down under there, but that's where the torpedo hit. Then they dropped the bombs on us, came over at 9 o'clock, dropped bombs, and the bomb hit right, went down through there, through two steel decks, come out down here and exploded out in the mud. If it went off where it hit back there beside the aviation fuel tank, I wouldn't be here today. Where were you? Uh, Where were you uh, during the torpedo and the bomb? The bomb hit, the torpedo hit right under here. The bomb hit right in here. Exploded right out there. And where it hit, right by the side of it, or within five foot, was the aviation fuel tank. And if it hit it, it blew us all to pieces. Okay. I've got to sit back down. Get the old boy. <laughs> yes, sir. We understand. But I'm not complaining. I go out to eat my breakfast some mornings at the little cafe out here. And uh, some time ago, somebody asked me, how's I doing? And I said, Doing good, says, well, we don't hear you complain. How was school like? Sc where I went to school here. Where did you go to school? Out here at Oak Hill. It was, at that time, it was the oldest high school in North Carolina. Oh. Okay. And uh, they had a high school there, and they hauled them in from Dudley Shoals and Grace Chapel and... King's Creek, that's before they all got high school, so they came out here to Oak Hill, so. Mm -hmm. My class was one of the smallest. It was the one that's 17 of us in it. Were you, do you think you were taught different from how we were taught today, or do you think it just kind of stayed the same? About the same, eh? About the same? Uh, the, the whole building was there then, in fact, the first old Oak Hill school building is a three-room building, and it, they were still using it because the community had grown, so they couldn't get them all in the new, last new building they'd built. Was your family like a uh, farming family when you grew up, or did your both your parents have a job? Or Everything here was farming about. There was a few uh, shops at Lenore. In fact, my brother, he'd went to work in the shop up there. Good and that is one reason I went in the Navy. I didn't want to work in the furniture shop. And uh, wages back then, they wasn't like they are now. Yeah. Before I went in to the Navy, I wouldn't go to get a job in the shop because they didn't have them. And uh, uh, work for the people and me just a young boy and so to show you the difference in the wages the last summer I worked before I went into the Navy in February I worked for 15 cents an hour wow. and if I used our team to do work for farmers got 25 cents an hour big wages back then yes uh, I know things wasn't as high priced as they are now, but can you imagine getting out there working eight or ten hours a day for a dollar and a half, fifteen cents an hour? I did it because you had to. 
I don't know if you've read or ever studied about the big depression we had in 1932. Nobody was working, wasn't no jobs, and that is one thing that was on my mind about going into the service. You was guaranteed $21 a month for four months, and then you automatically went to $36 a month. Then after that, it's according to how you done and with you, whatever you got into. I can't see nobody nowadays that would work for twenty-one dollars a month. <laughs> <laughs> but t times change. So when you first joined the Navy, what was your training like? Well, let me put it this way. Think about it. If you was a young man and sent off and you'd never been no farther from home than Hickory, how would it affect you? You was lost. And that's that's what I was. Not only me, is out of uh, nine boys in my class at school, Seven of us went in the service because there's nothing to do. There wasn't no work. You, we didn't go in together. We went at different times. But Did you get to be reunited with some of your friends at the USS Navy? Well, you have to learn to live with wherever you're at. And I had some good friends, and I had some that... Uh, wasn't because when you get in a place like the U.S. Navy, it's very different people in there. Plus, most of us that went in were farm boys. We'd never been no war. I'd never been no further than Hickory to went in the Navy. And I had to go to Asheville to enlist. So did you go on any other tours before you were at Pearl Harbor, before the attack, or was that your first uh, tour out on, with the Navy? Well, I told you that was my ship up there. I went on that in 1938, and in 1939, there was tension building up between Japan and the United States. So we'd been stationed on in California off the coast there in the San Diego where the ship was. So they sent, I don't remember how many, but sent a bunch of the ships out to Pearl Harbor, made it our home port. And that's where we operated in and out of from the 1939 till the attack came in 41, two years. And it's just, just a good place. Uh, a temperature always around 72 degrees. If it got over up to 80 degrees, the town of Honolulu would serve free lemonade in the streets. If it got over 80 degrees, and that's what kind of temperature it was. Just pleasant place. The only thing was it wasn't no girl folks out there. <laughs> forty, I think I told you, forty census, forty men for every one woman on the island. So when the uh, attack first started, you said you were just laying in bed and you just kind of, uh, someone said boiler blew up. So how did the day go on after that, like throughout the attack? What did you do? Well... My ship shot down four of the planes that attacked us, but the torpedo hit us, any, and we was working to save the ship, plus fighting back. And the word was out that there's a bunch of Japanese landing on the island on the other side from where we was. So we was at our stations. I was a range finder operator. Uh, it is a big tube and it has prisms and mirrors and stuff and you look in like that and turn some things and if you seen a ship or a plane or something and it was like that when you looked in both sides 
you worked some levers till them two came together and made a perfect plane or a perfect ship, and then you set it over your phone to the guns. Range, 10,000 yards. They knew how to set their sights and stuff to shoot that distance. Although 10, I just use that as a figure to explain it. Uh, you wouldn't ordinarily be shooting that uh, that far because you couldn't see them and out there on the ocean. You, I forgot what the horizon was, but 10,000 yards would be way over from the horizon, and that's as far as you could see is where the horizon was. So you said that um, earlier you met, or I know that the USS Raleigh wasn't actually sunk in Pearl Harbor. So how did you manage to save the ship from turning over? Well, I could get up and point it out. We started throwing all stuff on top. Uh, I'll get, get up there and show you a little about it. Oh, if you wants to write about it. These are six inch guns. There's ten of them on there. Right in there it sets torpedo tubes. There's three in a cluster, one cluster on each side. They're big and heavy. So before we throw them off, I don't believe it's on this picture, but there was catapults on there. We carried two planes. Whenever it started listing over, we set the planes off by hand because when the torpedo hit, it knocked out all of our power. Everything we done after that was by hand. We set the planes off. They had big catapults as long as from here to my shed out there where you shoot them off. Then we took them loose. That is on one side. It was a going over. Well, after we got them off, it started going back the other way. Then we had to take them off to the other side. And we ended up uh, setting it down on the bottom. It's about 20 foot deep there. Setting it down on the bottom. And the Navy Yard, that is in the late afternoon, they sent us a big barge over there and had empty tanks on it, floated good, and we put ropes around the ship and wire around the ship cables, tied it to that barge so it wouldn't turn over. And we sat there that way till February, then they patched us up enough to come back to San Diego, and that torpedo made a hole you could drive a Well, let's say a pickup through it probably. It's about seven or eight foot wide and long. Big hole in where the torpedo hit us. But we saved our ship and I went on to stay on it. The ship was the Raleigh, USS Raleigh, named after our captain. And it, ships had numbers and it's number seven. Well, I don't know if people go for that now, but he used to say number seven was a lucky number. Yes. So, being we saved it, I guess maybe it was lucky. And I went on, I stayed on that ship till 1945 because what we went through and it survived it. I said, well, they'll have to run me off of here. So, I had to stay the war started because Whenever the attack came, I only had 71 days to go to get out on four years, and I was planning on coming back to these old red hills. But oh. I didn't, had to stay, and I, I stayed in there seven months and six, se seven years, six months and 12 days before I got out. I got to sit down, boys, I'm weak, lazy. Hmm. Well, I've been interviewed for several years, some years now about it. 
and the old minds are getting feeble. Yes. So I might have told some others something about it I don't remember now. And I might have told told something now to you that I didn't tell to them. So uh, you consider how many years ago has that been, 41. That's a lifetime for a lot of people to now. Okay, so after the attack, um, how did your ship get repaired? Well, <clears throat> did I tell you, we set it down on the bottom to keep it and turn it over. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. We sat down in February, and they had dry docks out there. That's where you can run a ship in, close the gates and pump all the water out. Then you can go under it or around it, whatever. And they decided that one of our engine rooms was blown plumb out had two engine rooms that we could make it back to the states and in February we left there and I'm just throwing this in it wasn't much history but every night the Japanese would explain how many ships they'd sunk during the attack you could get Tokyo Japan and it's English and they was doing it for propaganda but anyhow took us uh, I believe nine days. Ordinarily you could make it in five or six from Honolulu back to the west coast. But I think it took us nine days because we had part of the ship was full of water underneath there and we only had two engines that could work instead of four. And you'd hear the Japanese at night. We did it several nights there coming back talk about they sunk the Raleigh again and one of the sailors says, how many, I won't say the cuss words, times are they going to sink us? They sink us every night about. But uh, we made it back and went to Mary Island Navy Yard and it took them four months to repair it. Uh, the hole was, uh, I say, if it was, when they made jagged pieces, if you cut them all out, which they had to, it is a hole big enough you could have drove a pickup into the side up. Okay, so once your ship was repaired, what what did you do after that? Did you just stay at the States or did you go on tours? No, uh, they was needing ships and we had started sending troops and convoys and supplies to the Philippines. The Japanese not only attacked at Pearl Harbor, they attacked it out there in the Philippine Islands and some of those others and they put us as a escort for the a convoy they'd be any horse from maybe six to ten or twelve ships that haul supplies in that convoy and we'd go along and patrol watch for the we call it the enemy to get those ships and supplies down into the Philippines and uh, some of those other islands down in there, I forgot the name of them, where there's fighting on. And we done that for five or six months. About the same time, they attacked, uh, they didn't attack, they landed in Alaska. And they had, we had, uh, the Navy had to send ships up there because they'd already landed troops on some of the soil in the Lucian Islands. So they pulled us out as a to go up there and patrol up there. And we would go around where they had done put some troops on the islands. We'd go in there, usually at night, and bombard them places where they had landed, trying to keep them out. And it worked. We kept them out. It was a lot of people who wonder, didn't know how the Japanese would get their troops off of them islands where they'd done landed them. And one of our submarines was, went in close enough that they observed them, they'd take them off. They'd send a submarine and get their troops off in them submarines. And 
we didn't have that much to do was, except just to keep them from landing troops up there because it was a short distance from there, not a short distance, but flying distance to Seattle, Washington, their big Navy yard. They was afraid if they got bases on those islands, they'd start bombing Seattle, Washington there. Okay, so I know uh, Alaska is known to have some pretty bad storms. Did you hit any of those, or was your ship damaged? Some pretty bad what? Storms? Oh, yeah. When they sent us from the South Pacific to the Lucian Islands, as always known among sailors and everybody, that where the Arctic Ocean comes down from Alaska and meets the warm waters of the Pacific, is causes bad storms. Well, we run into one of them as we left the South Pacific to go to Alaska. The ship was built, in fact it was a ship standing straight up, to roll 45 degrees either way and come back up. And No, 55 degrees, I was wrong. 55 degrees and come back up to as normal. And that storm was so bad that we was a rolling 52 degrees. And it had had a lot of, a, a bunch of other anti-aircraft guns and armor put on it so it was heavier than what it was built for. The captain passed, had the word passed on the loudspeaker when it was rolling so bad, he says, uh, he didn't like to inform us, but he should know. The ship was built to roll 55 degrees, or 53, whatever it was there, I forgot. But it says we've been rolling within two degrees of it. it. says we might go all the way over, but don't worry, you won't live but seven minutes in this cold water. So that is a lot of encouragement to us. After Pearl Harbor, I understand the U.S. went to Midway, the Battle of Midway. Do you remember that? Yep. We wasn't in it, but I you remember. I lost a good buddy out there. He is, I went through training with him, and well, they put sailors on different ships as they needed them. Mm -hmm. And he was on a... Well, I forgot what type ship it was now. But they got hit in the Battle of Midway, and it was a going down. They said, there's, the captain said, there's no way they could save the ship. And in the bottom of the ship, or way down in the lower decks, there's a lot of, that's where you, a lot of the duties was. They called down there on the telephone and told them that we was hit. They knew we was hit, but they might not be able to save the ship. And a boy I went through training with was down in there, and his reply was, Don't worry, Captain, we've got a good card game going. And they wasn't worried about going down. They, well, you, if you worried about it, you'd go crazy. You out on the ship and getting hit. Nobody to pick you up or anything. So when the war finally ended, what was your thoughts whenever you heard that? When it ended? Yes, when we finally uh, bombed Japan and they finally surrendered. Get home, get home. Whenever the attack came at Pearl Harbor, I had made me a calendar just put the dates on it, days to go till I'd get discharged. I was supposed to get out in the first week in February. It was four years enlistment up, and I'd already planned to come home. 
Well, when the war started, you was automatically kept, so we didn't have no good attitude if you thought you was coming home and then the war started and you knowed you had to stay. But you didn't brood on it. You, you was there for the present, not what was going to happen. So did you have any like big events when you first came home, a welcome back celebration or anything like that? Hell what? Whenever you first got back, did you have like a big celebration, you and all your family or or a... Well not big, but after the attack to Pearl Harbor, we got our ship back to Seattle, Washington, and they said it'd take four months to repair it. They were going to give us 30 days leave to come home. Not everybody, but ships got two sides, port and starboard, and that's the way they run everything. If what they are going to give is, I, I forgot which one, but if starboard, all the people in the starboard side, if they gave that 30 days, they'd get to go home or wherever. When they come back, the other bunch would go. So... Uh, I was in the bunch that got to come home, and uh, but I didn't know I was coming till two hours before we was getting into port at Seattle. So me and the buddy of mine, we got a ride. We first called around Seattle to see if we could get a plane out and couldn't. We got a ride down to. Portland, Oregon, and caught a plane there and came home. That's when I met the girl that went on to be my wife for 54 years. And that's her. If you can see the sailor up there, that's me and the wife when we was married. I also noticed you got a bunch of medals. Um, <clears throat> Purple Heart? That's my son's. I had a son that got killed in Vietnam. Oh. And that's the Purple Heart they sent us for. Oh. Well, I had five sons and one boy. It's kind of, I don't know whether you want to even put it down or not, but. It's okay. Me and the wife were. My girlfriend she was, and we'd been writing. I'd met her at home after the attack at Pearl Harbor. We rode each other for two years and decided she would, that she'd wait on me till we'd get married. But when the ship got tore up some and came into Seattle, Washington, I came home. She was working for Shuford's Cord Mill in Granite Falls on the second shift. And we had talked about it in our letters. We might get married if I got home. But anyhow, I went to the door. and I'd got the train to Hickory and got a cab and came to Granite. Went to the door of the building where she was working. And a watchman went in and got her and brought her out. She says, what are you doing home? Says, I come home to get married if I'd find somebody to have me. She never missed a beat. She says, give me tomorrow to get a new dress. So everybody said, me and we hadn't went together but a couple of weeks, said the marriage wouldn't last, but it lasted 54 years. That's me and her in the center up there. You see, I've got a uniform on. Changed a little bit since then. <laughs> So, which medals are actually yours? Uh, which you want to? Oh, okay. If I can get up, I'll come over there. I'm getting old. I'm losing my hearing and everything else. So, I not, might not hear you good to play. Now, what was it? Um, which medals are yours? Or none of them. None of them are yours. My son got killed in Vietnam, and that's the medals he had. One of my sons, uh, we got married, and 
the wife and said, well, well, I want a boy. And she got pregnant somewhere or another, but she says, I hope it's a boy. It's being you're still in the Navy and something happens to you. I says, no, that ain't the way you do things. You have a girl to take care of them five boys that'll be coming along. <laughs> Guess what happened? That's the way it turned out. One girl and five boys? One girl and yeah. five boys. Which one of your sons? And one of the boys was in Vietnam and he got killed over there and they sent us those medals. What was your son's name, the one in Vietnam? Uh -huh. What was your son's name, the one in Vietnam? Gene Calvin. But when he was little, he was awful short. And we nicknamed him, we got started calling him Shorty. And you know, he went through the service and got killed, and that's the way they put it in. And Gene Calvin, Shorty Reed. Mm -hmm. That's the way they put it in there. <laughs> All right. Let's see. That's my 50th anniversary over there. This is the 40th here. That was my first grandchild. This was the man that settled this whole area in here. As a great grandfather, had a house right up here where my tractor shed is. And he was in Oxford. And this was a voting place for Western or uh, for Old Burke County. It used to be a blacksmith shop set right out yonder. I can remember it, but that was where they came in to vote when they first started voting in North Carolina. Well, North Carolina wasn't settled. This is one of the first settlements in this area. And settled by the Oxfords. I ain't lazy, but I'm tired. So okay, well, that's the reason I we'll aim hang right close to these seats. I want to ask you a couple of questions about other historical events um, that you weren't in, but I, we want to know how it was like. Um, <clears throat> in, in, in the 1960s, uh, Cuba took part in Russia's uh, nuclear weapons and uh, for 13 days uh, as a Cuban Missile Crisis. Do you remember how, how life was like during the Cuban Missile Crisis? No, not really. Not really? Uh, I'd have to study a while. Oh, okay. As I said, I'm a getting old, and that includes the old brain. There's been a lot of stuff went through it, and I, it's okay. sometimes I can remember things good. Sometimes I can't remember what yesterday was. Uh -huh. Oh, but okay. it's okay. As I told somebody out at the station. Says I don't hear you complain any, and I says, well, I ride with that cemetery every morning coming out here. Don't hear them complaining, so why should I complain? When U.S. bombed Japan, when U.S. bombed Japan, I know Matt asked him, but he asked about you coming home. Uh, how were your, how were your friends like, or your shipmates? How did they feel, and how did you feel about U.S. bombing Japan? Blow them out of the water. Really. They didn't have no sympathy for them. They didn't have none for us, did they, when they bombed Pearl Harbor? No, sir. So we didn't have no sympathy for them. You get out there and ride through some of them storms and get that midnight watch 12 to 4 every other night, you ain't got no sympathy for the people that's causing it, or most of us didn't that's in there. And the people there, I... I really felt kind of sorry for them. I mean, you know, they dropped the first A-bombs and atom bombs on the Japan. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I felt kind of sorry for them because the people there, they was like the people here. They had people in the service, but they, they didn't want to see no war going on, getting their people killed. And I forgot what it was, and they dropped that first A-bomb over there. That's, it made us in the service we wasn't proud or anything like that, but we knew it was going to shorten the war, and it did. They surrendered pretty soon. I don't remember where I was when they bombed it. 
we went up through there. We was over in there, and Japan had never been shot on by a foreign enemy. They picked me, our ship, uh, and another one just exactly like it. And we went up through there one night, went in at night, and we went up through there and we bombarded Japan so they couldn't be a saying that their homeland had never been bombarded. And we, uh, bomb, I'm talking about bombarded. I could show you the guns on it, but they're six inch guns. And each shell weighed 105 pounds and it had a powder bag about two and a half foot long you put in after the, put that uh, shell in your gun chamber. And it would throw that 10 or 12 miles. And you can't see that far, but you had spotters. We had the submarines out there, spotters telling where to shoot and what and everything. So they got a little bit of their own taste being they'd never been homeland, never been bombarded. We we went up by the side of it and some of them said we was about eight miles out, but we closed in a little bit more because they didn't have no maps of how deep that water was there. Uh, it took 21 feet of our ship 21 feet of water to float our ship and not hit the bottom. So when it's be shallow that way, you had you had things to tell you how deep, but you couldn't just turn loose and go way in close and shoot them. You had to stay out a certain distance on account of the depth of the water. Okay, uh, Mr. Reed, I don't know if you have seen, but have you seen the um, a movie that supposedly de depicts the events on Pearl Harbor? The movie Pearl Harbor. Have you seen those? I seen it when it first came out. Have you uh, seen it? I had a friend, a, good, a cousin, a friend that lived at Morgan, and, and he called me and says they're going to show that movie Pearl Harbor at Gamewell that night. Says let's meet and eat supper and go see it. Says I want to hear you on it. Hmm. So that's what we done. That, um, but it was a movie, right? Made for a love story. And some of it was fairly good, but as far as they had a few clips, and me and him, we talked about it. We met out there and eat and went to game well to see it. Why couldn't they go back and get old news clips? They could have got them from TV stations and stuff, and uh, showed some of the real stuff. and. Some of the stuff I I says that never happened like that, and my buddy is over there with me too. He said no, nope. says that's not right. Well, like I said, it's a movie, and it was more of a movie. There's a big love interest in it. When was this? Oh, that's been I won't say how many years ago. Uh, let's see, Richard's been dead six, seven years. That's been about 10, 15 years ago when they showed it out there. So it's not the new version. They had the movie Pearl Harbor. Okay. Some of it was good, but me and him talked about it. Why couldn't they got old news clips and I put that in the movie and worked it in. As far as the movie, it was more of a love story movie than that, but mm -hmm. it involved Pearl Harbor. It showed some actual pictures, but not much. And I don't know, maybe they couldn't get those pictures. Somebody's got control of them. Maybe they wouldn't let them show them or something. I don't know. But the movie Pearl Harbor, it, part of it was pretty close to what happened, but they could have got news clips or maybe the news people wouldn't turn them loose or something. I thought and put more into it, actual stuff that happened, you know. Well, alrighty. Thank you very much, Mr. Reed.